All right, so uh, we have been uh, talking about uh, equilibrium constant in terms of concentration and molarity. It turns out there's another way we can express it, although we don't do it, I don't do it very often, but you know you can do it this way. Uh, most of the time we'll uh, use concentration, brackets, molarity. You can also express K in terms of partial pressures. Okay, so we have a system here. SO3 is in equilibrium with SO2 and O2. Um, so we could eat right an equilibrium constant expression with the, uh, for this equilibrium system in terms of partial pressures. So it's the same thing, except for instead of brackets and using units of molarity, we're going to use partial pressures and units of atmospheres. So we'd say the partial pressures of the product, so SO2 squared times the partial pressure of O2, not squared. Are you still one? All over the partial pressure of SO3 squared. All right, so when we do this, we have to be a little bit more specific about what we're talking about. So we actually need to write K sub P. So we're talking about the equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressures because they are numerically different. They're different numbers. So we've got to know which one uh, we're talking about, okay, in case we want to do a handy-dandy calculation. So technically, for these, these equilibrium constant expressions that we just uh, did and these equilibrium constants, we should have written K sub C. Okay? Concentration. C stands for concentration. Instead of partial pressures, it's K sub C. But since this is the go-to uh, equilibrium constant, nine times out of ten, maybe, maybe even 99 times out of 100, we're going to use concentration, not partial pressure. Usually, we'll just be lazy and not write sub C. You can even see it here. Okay? Tro's being lazy right there. He just said it's K. We just assume that that's K sub C. So anytime you see just K, know that it's K sub C, concentration. Then that is what we will work with most of the time. But if you do want to, and there could be a variety of reasons why you would want to, use it in terms of partial pressure, you do have to be a little bit more specific, and so always write that case of P. And sometimes you might measure it in pressure, so you calculate in case of P, really easy. And you might want to interconvert between case of C and case of P. Equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressures and uh, concentration. And so guess what? we got a nice little handy-dandy equation right down here. Watch this. I'm going to highlight it. Wow. wow. <laughs> Just when you think I pulled out all the stops comes out and highlights something. That was pretty much already highlighted, but I highlighted the highlighted part. That's how I roll. Okay, and so let's just talk about what these values are. Okay, it's a fairly straightforward one. Okay, so if you've got K sub C, that would be, I'm still in highlighting mode. Let me go back to pen. So that's our equilibrium constant in terms of concentration. What's R? Hmm. Hmm. Think back to Gen Chem 1. We saw an uppercase R. The gas constant. The ideal gas constant. Okay. So R is the ideal gas constant. And we saw it uh, in the Arrhenius equation for thermochemistry. Um, we had uh, K for the rate constant. So that was R. We needed that there too. Then we used it for that, for the Arrhenius equation, we used the value of 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Now that we're talking about gases again, we'll use the 0 0.08206, the one that we used in Gen Chem 1. 
liters atmospheres per mole times Kelvin. T, what do we think T is? Temp, uppercase, uppercase T is always going to be temp. What units do you think we should use for calculating our temperatures? Kelvin. Kelvin, so we're dealing with gases, so it's always going to be in Kelvin. So temp and Kelvin. Good old Kelvin. All right, and then delta N, that's really the only one, other one we really need to talk about, maybe a little bit new. So in terms of gases, so I think we're talking about gases, partial pressure, gases. What did N mean when we were talking about gases? Moles, right? Number of moles, PV equals NRT. Remember that fun equation? Okay, so number of moles. So delta, what, did, what is delta? Change or difference, okay? So this will be our change in number of moles. Okay, change in what? And that's just final minus initial. So the number of moles in our final products minus initial are reactants. Okay, and so for this, if you're going to calculate delta N, it would be the number of moles of the products minus the number of moles in the reactant side. And so you just look at the equation, coefficients, Look how many moles of gas you have on either side. So for this equation, our delta N would be how many moles of gases do we have on the product side? Two? Two? It's one possible answer. Three? Yep, three. So we got two moles of SO2 and one mole of O2. So you got to add them up all of the gas molecules. Now, there might be a solid in there, so don't worry about that. Just the gas molecules. So three minus, how many moles do we have on the reactant side? Two? Yeah, just two. Two moles of SO3. Okay, so just look at the coefficients for the gases, add them up. And then three minus two, plug that into your calculator. Hit the enter. One. So yeah, that would be delta N of one. All right, so that's how you would uh, interconvert between uh, cases of P, equilibrium constant, and partial pressure from a case of C, or vice versa. And so if you're calculating K sub C, uh, just be KP over RT raised to delta N. Divide both sides by that. <coughs> KC would equal KP over RT raised to delta N. All right, but as I said, you know, the vast majority.